Fairy Legends of Avalon is a role-playing game from Spider Studios, released on Xbox Live Arcade in November 2010 and on the PlayStation Network in January 2011. Uh, released by Spider Studios, it's a turn-based combat RPG in which you play the lead role of a fairy from the land of Avalon as he journeys to try and save the kingdom from diminishing magic uh, levels. As an Xbox Live and PSN Network title, it's not a massively polished entry. It's it's quaint and it's there are some good points, there's some bad points, and we'll be touching on those. First, we'll start with the good points. Um, the character design is quite good. The different looks of the various races in the world are, are quite interesting and fairly unique. Um, so that it has that going for it. The story itself is, is relatively unusual. It's a little bit fern gully, I'll admit, but it is quite good. Certainly um, not your usual fair, and playing a fairy as opposed to a normal um, traditional character is quite interesting. The fact that it's turn-based. I love that it's turn-based. You don't get enough of turn-based combat games anymore, and for that, I'm, I, 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 it gets a pass with me. It, it'll be divisive as to whether you enjoy it or not, depending on whether you like turn-based combat, but for me, that's always a plus. And also just the general way you get about the world, you are a fairy and so you have wings and you can fly and they have a, a way of boosting your speed if you click in the left um, the left thumbstick so that you fly a lot quicker. And it makes you work in three dimensions as rather than just the traditional two, which is always nice. So it has a few innovations and a few uh, bits to it that are not the normal and, and that's always nice. As for the not so good parts of the game, we'll touch on those now. The the dialogue tree uh, system, while lifted wholesale from Mass Effect, including the blue for good, red for bad options, and the wheel and everything like that, it's rather less well implemented. Um, it just feels a bit clunky and, and it doesn't really work. It also ties into the fact that there's no voice acting in the game, which is either to save costs and also to save download time and everything like that. So it's all text-based and it's a little bit clunky. All the dialogue boxes hang around just that little bit too long. You can skip them uh, with the press of a button, but it it all just feels a little bit busy workish. So that's that's not ideal. Uh, the missions that you get set on are fairly unimaginative. The, the usual fetch quests and go and beat up this person to get their stuff and that sort of thing. Nothing too inspired and can sometimes be a little bit boring. It has the odd mission where it gives you the option of doing it the good way or the bad way and so there's a certain amount of choice there but it's all fairly limited. And those quests have to be have to be completed in a set way, in a set order. So say, for example, uh, there's one part where you have to go and fetch a load of pages that have been blown across an island. You can't... If you've come across one, I came across one that was in a in a bird's nest, but there wasn't any way to interact with it because I hadn't gone and talked to someone to tell me it was in the bird's nest. Little things like that it can be a little bit annoying, but yeah, it's not the end of the world. The combat itself, even though it is um, turn-based and so therefore good just by being turn-based, it's a little bit easy. There's not a lot of variety to it, especially early on in the game where you don't have a lot of attacks and things like that. It's all very basic, all very like hit that person, hit that person, either use physical attacks or magic. Yeah, there's not a huge amount of variety, um, which uh, can partly be put down to the fact that it's a relatively low budget independent, um, relatively old game, a couple of years old now, so yeah, nothing too brilliant, but yeah, it, it could have been done better, could have been done worse. All in all, though, while Fairy isn't going to win any particular awards for outstanding brilliance or anything like that, and it, it has its downsides, it is a fun and enjoyable game, and if you like role-playing games and you like turn-based combat, you'll enjoy this. It's only 600 Microsoft points off of the Xbox Live Arcade, which is a pretty good price. I mean, it's very cheap, half a normal full sort of full game download price from the arcade, and so for that... I would definitely say you get 600 Microsoft points worth of enjoyment out of this game. If you can see past a couple of its niggling flaws, then it's definitely a game for you. I would give it a try, see how you get on. I, I give it my sort of mild recommendation, especially given the context of what it is and how much it costs. So, yeah, go ahead and give it a try.